In this video, I'm going to show how to clone a Git repository into Android Studio in a brand new Android Studio setup. So in other words, Android Studio is installed, and I've covered that in a previous video. In this video, we're going to look at Android Studio that does not yet have Git associated with it, and we're going to clone a repository into that Android Studio instance, including all of the steps needed to set up that Git repository. So let's take a look. Two things we need first. We need Android Studio, and we also need a Git repository. So I'm going to run out here to my environment, and I'm going to open up my plant diary queue, which is an Android Studio project I did on a different computer in a different Android Studio environment, naturally. Now I'm going to go to Code, and we see we have a clone URL, so I'm going to hit Copy. After that, I'm going to open up Android Studio. Just, you know, open it any old project if we wish. Now I'm going to choose File, New, and then this is the important part, Project from Version Control. And up in the URL, I simply paste that URL to my GitHub repository, which is backed by the Git version control system. Now we notice that it says that Git is not installed. So let's choose Download and Install, and follow the prompts from here. You see I simply click a few boxes, and now the installing... Uh, bar is going and all of a sudden git is installed not bad and i'll say compared to previous versions of android studio you had to install git separately and then tell android studio where to find git so this makes the process much easier now we can simply hit clone now it's going to clone the project from git github in this instance um, let's go ahead and say we want to open this in a new window one thing I'll tell you about Android and Android Studio in general is that many times when you clone one project that was developed in a different version, as soon as you clone it, you end up with some dependency issues. So that's just something that we have to work through. Uh, in this case, yeah, look, I wrote the project, I trust it, so I'm going to say trust project. Now it says, okay, I don't understand where the uh, Gradle JDK is from this project, because there again, I'm cloning this from a different computer. So I'm simply going to say, use embedded JDK. Uh, notice once again, it's automatically updating. This is, again, much easier than it used to be when we had to update things separately. Here it just says, I see the problem, I'm going to try to fix it for you. Let's go ahead and allow this to download a bit. You can see the uh, build status going on over here in the sync window. Now you notice it's also installing the correct version of the Android SDK. In this case, it's version 29 because I developed this for Android Q. So uh, notice that it's smartly going out and helping us to resolve these dependencies automatically. Again, this used to be a manual task, so this is actually quite straightforward. Let's let it keep going for a bit longer. Now, I fast-forwarded this a little bit so you didn't have to wait through it, but you see after about two minutes we get build successful, which makes us happy. So, um, looks like it's still processing a bit, but I will say, here's my advice to you. Anytime you start a new job or even switch jobs or anything like that, what I always recommend, the first thing to do is make sure that you can get your environment set up and then set a breakpoint and walk through the debugger. That's the easiest way to learn code that you didn't write. And the reality is, in our profession, while a lot of times your friends and family think you sit around and write iPhone apps all day from the ground up, the reality is 95% of our job is figuring out code that somebody else wrote. And the fastest way to do that, in my opinion, is to clone the project, get the project running, set a few breakpoints, and then walk through those breakpoints at your own pace and watch the project as it's running. So this is the first thing that I would do when starting a new project, starting a new job, or anything like this. Looks at this point like we're in good shape, so now what we need is the next big thing to do, which is to try to run this in the debugger. So you'll notice up above we have the app profile selected by default, which should be selected. Uh, that should be what you see up above most of the time in an Android project. Then we have an emulator, an AVD, Android Virtual Device, which I set up in a previous video. And finally, we have the play and the debug. So I'm going to choose debug, and this should start the emulator, which will take a few moments, and then run the project in the emulator.
each time that you debug in the emulator, usually each time, it needs to build the project. So incidentally, you'll see down here, there's a bar where it explains it's building the project. Uh, that's to be expected. And this will take a few moments as well as loading the emulator from a cold boot will take a few moments as well. I'll fast forward it as I have been doing through this video so you don't have to wait for it. But just so you know, a few minutes have elapsed as I'm fast forwarding these parts. It looks like that build took just over two minutes. So now it should be uploading, essentially transferring that APK or AAB, the Android uh, runnable, up to our emulator. And then we can uh, use it on the emulator just as we would with a, a typical device. Note the install bar over here, progress bar saying that it's installing the application. Uh, most of the time this will work. There are some times I notice it falls over. But the nice thing about emulators is you can create as many as you'd like and, and try again on a different setup and even look at the differences on why one might have failed and one might have succeeded. One footnote I will tell you, they do take up a bit of disk space. So just be warned uh, that if you're running low on disk space, take a look at your AVDs on your drive. Uh, they, they can eat up several gigabytes. So just be aware of that. The app is starting, and notice that it is asking for uh, location permission. I'm going to go ahead and say while using this app, and here we go. Here's our look and feel. So total elapsed time from cloning to installing all the dependencies to running the emulator was about 10 minutes. And again, this video is a bit shorter because I fast forwarded through those parts. But you see that at this point, we are in a really good position to start debugging our application. And as a matter of fact, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and uh, snap a breakpoint in my main activity, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, so on open map, I could set a breakpoint there and I can click on our map view. And you notice as soon as I do that, we see the breakpoint hits here. And now I can step through this one line at a time using F8 to step over each line at my leisure. And then F9 to say, okay, I'm all finished with that. And that allows me to watch this program as it is running and watch what it's doing. Debugger is a whole other topic. We'll save for a whole other video. But nonetheless, in this video you've seen, we've gone from a very vanilla installation of Android Studio in a GitHub URL and when we've been able to clone and deploy the project and step through it in the debugger. So I hope this video has been helpful. There will be several videos to follow this, and I look forward to seeing you in those. Thank you.